If you've ever sent anything to print, you'll understand the importance of having bleed and trim marks on your artwork when you send them to print. And if you're anything like me, when I first started out, you'll be wondering, well, what are they? What is bleed and what are trim marks? So I thought today, why not? Let's go through what they are and also how to add them to your artwork if you're using Illustrator. So first of all, bleed. Bleed is an additional area that you add to the outside of your artwork, which is basically for shift. So if you send something to print, there's always an element that it might shift a few millimeters in any direction. So what you do is you add extra area to the artwork just to anticipate that. I mean, most printers will normally shift a fraction of a millimeter, but just to be safe, I'd always say add three millimeters bleed to your artwork. Trim or crop marks are exactly what they say on the tin. So it's where the printer will cut the artwork. So top and bottom and left and right. If you don't have them on there, there's a risk that the cut might be slightly off or they might not cut it exactly right. And at least that way, it's a fail safe that you're gonna get the exact size artwork that you want. So let's jump straight into Illustrator and go through the prep that we need to do to get your artwork to have bleed and crop marks. So as you can see, I've already loaded Illustrator up and as soon as you load anything up, you will see when you start a new document, you'll get this panel. So I'm using Adobe Illustrator CC, the latest version, but even if you're using say a CS5 or CS4, you'll get a very similar window to this. So whenever you're starting a new file, always give it a name. So I've called it test file here. And then going from there, you need to know what you're working on. So let's say working on an A6 document. So this, I've already pre-populated it, is A6 dimension. So 148.5 by 105 millimeters, that is A6. We then decide whether you want it landscape or portrait, and also if it's single-sided or double-sided. So two artboards will be for a double-sided print and one sided will be for single-sided print. Now's the important bit. So what we do now is we add the bleed. So we will be working with three millimeters bleed just so we will be safe with any printer. It's worth mentioning at this point that I've dealt with a lot of people where they've prepped artwork, say an A6 document on an A4 page and they scale it on the A4 artboard. That is the wrong way to do it. Always do it this way. If you're working on an A5, A4, business card size, know the dimensions of the file that you're working on to start with and create your artboard to that size. Don't work on a larger artboard size. From there, we select our advanced options. If you can't see this on your screen already, it's normally on the drop down. so just click advanced options and double check that you're working with CMYK. Most times, Illustrator will be working in RGB, so just select that it's CMYK. And raster effects, make sure that you're working at 300 PPI. Don't work at anything ridiculously high or anything ridiculously low. 72 DPI or PPI will be for screens, not prints. So always ensure go for 300 PPI and then create. So as you can see, the artboard has been created and let's just go through what's actually on this artboard at the moment. So this boundary box here, the black line here with a white inside is your artboard. So this is what's going to have all of your key artwork in. This red hairline around the outside is your bleed area. So any non-key artwork, i.e. text or key photos should not go into that artwork. So by this, I mean, let's put Let's put a colour background in. So let's go with this blue. So we'll have the blue, we'll get rid of the stroke, and we will put some text on here. So this is test text for postcard. And I've actually spelt it all correct. So we're going to keep it as a standard font and we'll make it slightly larger. There we go. So with this, what I would recommend is always keep your key text within a good area of the margin. You shouldn't have any text going into that bleed area because from this black key line here, it will get cut out. Always think with the bleed, the reason why we've got it is because of shift. So this text could shift into here if it's there, or it could also shift that way, it could shift that way, but likewise, it could shift in any direction. So I would refrain from putting not only anything in the bleed, but avoid putting any key text, any key elements that you don't want potentially cut out within a five millimeter margin inside of the artboard. So let's just change the color of that text. That's white text. 
So there we go, let's say you've set up your artwork, this is what you want to have printed, you've got all your text, everything on there, and we're good to go, you like your artwork. So now you want to save it. So we have checked that nothing's in the bleed, nothing is in the margin area, and at all colours and imagery that you don't mind being cut off, say background image or background colour as we've got here. Now what we do is we simply go as normal, we go to File, Save As, it will bring up a new window and we've got test file and what we'll do is click Adobe PDF, click save and now we've got this new window. This is where everything happens. So what we need to do is go to marks and bleed on the left hand side and then we've got all of these settings here. So with these, you don't need to select all. I've had many experiences where I've got registration marks, color bars, everything on there. That tends to be for a lifeographic press and if you go into a standard smaller printer or you're getting say 100 flyers done, you wouldn't need all of that. You can add it, but you don't necessarily need it. Working in digital print, I would always say, because we've already put it on there, select use document bleed settings it's already pre-populated it with three millimeters bleed we've already done that when we set up the artwork and then from there all we need is trim marks so literally select trim marks use document bleed settings and obviously go through your compression and everything else like that if you've got really high resolution images and literally click save that's it that's all you need to do from that point i always recommend Go and find the file and open it up in Acrobat to check that it's come out all right. So as you can see, I've just opened it up here and it's perfect, it's good to go. So as you can see, the text is all there, it's fine. It's got the trim marks and it's also got the bleed going into the trim marks. So there we have it. That is how you add crop marks and bleed to your artwork in Illustrator. All you have to do is make sure that you're setting your artwork to the right artboard size. So if you're A6, work on an A6 artboard, have your bleed on there as well. And when you export in your PDF, make sure that you select trim marks and ensure that document bleed is on there as well. And save it as a PDF and then send it to print. Nice and simple. How easy is that? As always, if you like this video, please like the video. If you've got any comments or you want to add any more points to it, please drop a comment down below, it'd mean the world. And if you've randomly found this channel by pure fluke, please subscribe to the channel and click that little bell if you wanna find out every single time I release a new video. So, thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time, bye.